Hello, my name is Dana Popa. Um, I will be talking about uh, the project entitled Note Natasha. It's a project on uh, sex trafficking, human trafficking for sexual exploitation. Um, and uh, I am starting with a photograph that is not part of the work, it's not part of the exhibit nor of the book. Um, but I am taking the opportunity to start with an answer to one of the most asked questions, which is why I have done this project. Um, this is where I come from. This is my native town. It's a view from uh, the window of my mom's house. And it's, it's a good description of the society where I'm coming from, which is very similar to Moldova. And if we want to generalize, um, we could say Eastern Europe. And I want to say that right at the end of this street, there used to be some sort of um, some sort of women being brought by men um, at requests. So what I'm trying to say is this is kind of the places where the women are coming from. It's not much happening. It's kind of gritty. The image itself is it's not. It, it looks like a black and white, but it's a color one. And the society knows about what is going on, but it, it actually never puts it up there. It keeps it hidden, and it's a topic that nobody likes to talk about. Hence the stigma these women, they feel they have on them if they go back. But that's the thing I'd like to talk to you later, about it later. So um, let's move on. Not Natasha is a photographic study into the trauma of the women who have been through the ordeal of sex trafficking. It took me three years to complete it. And I started in 2006 by trying to make a portrait of the survivors of sex trafficking in Moldova. And I'll tell why Moldova. Moldova is one of the, is the poorest country in Europe. And uh, it's the main supplier of sexual slaves for the, let's say, continent, even though the women are sent to as much as 32 destinations, even in Dubai and Israel and Saudi Arabia and uh, UK and many other destinations. And then I tried to look at the missing women. I wanted to look at the absence. I mean, I wanted to look at their presence through their absence, since I had already done a portrait of them. And then in the third phase, I wanted to bring the project abroad. I wanted to look at it where it's happening. Um, this is part of the series done on missing women. This 11-year-old girl is missing her mother and she hardly can remember how she looks. She's trying on her dress and um, I'm looking at it, uh, uh, um, uh, at the duality of it. I'm looking at the woman she's becoming without having a, mo a mother and still feeling the, the presence of her mother through that dress she hopes to wear when she gets bigger. But let's start with the beginning. Um, this is Maria, 19 years old, trafficked into Turkey, held captive for two months, if I remember well. She accepted the job uh, uh, in Turkey. Um, she wanted to actually to raise money for her wedding. Instead, she got trapped forced to work as a prostitute. She ran away when she returned. She was abandoned by her husband-to-be because the child she gave birth to was supposedly not his. Fortunately for her, she has a, a wonderful mother who helps her out. This is part of the first series, which is a portrait of the survivors of sex trafficking. I tried to cast a gentle look at all of the girls um, that I met. I had to be explicit and in a way protective. Um, I wanted to look how they could live with a trauma and with the fear that um, the mother or the husband might find out what happened to them and then might uh, throw them away on the street. This is Dahlia. 21 years old. She was sold by her husband-to-be. And I'm taking this opportunity to explain how the phenomenon of 
human trafficking happens most of the times. The offer comes from a person which is very close to the girl. In this case, the, the man spent about six months with her and then he said that he would like to marry her and uh, he, he present her to his family in Turkey. So they um, took a flight to Turkey and the next day she was sold for $2,200. Dalia was actually the girl that um, I met in a shelter of the International Organization for Migration um, where the girls are kept for a month and are offered support, psychological support. Sometimes they come with, no, with very few clothes uh, um, and uh, they're hungry and uh, anyway they are given the necessary support for a month or so and then I guess they they, uh, they're just back into their families or back into prostitution, some of them. This is um, Nadia. She was sold by her mother. She was going to be 18 years old here, uh, three days before she was going to turn 18 years old. She was obviously, like many of these girls, very, very fragile. Now she's laughing, the next moment she's crying. Um, she doesn't know what she wants and her only chance was to go back to her family. She used to tell me that her stepfather would call her little prostitute even before she was sold by her own mother. And so I probably, I understood that um, many of these girls are coming from broken families and the environment they are brought up in is extremely rough and in a way, tr you know, um, people don't even talk about trafficking but they, they think it's something that can happen in a way natural. Well, it happens. It happens to you. Um, it happens to many other women. Um, these are two sisters that I met at the same shelter. It's the only case of um, trafficking for labor. One of them was sexually um, abused. That is why the picture um, is in the work. Um, this is the first time they went to their place. After one year and four months of working constantly on a farm in Ukraine, they came back with no money, less clothes that they, that they, um, they had when they left. And um, of course, um, traumatized.